see some of my students uh, here. I really appreciate your support. Your support is very important to me. And uh, thank you, Nejwa. Thank you, some of my colleagues are here as well. And also, uh, I would like to specifically thank uh, people who are sponsoring the talk. And these are the Canvas, and also the Artists of Color Union. Uh, they have been sponsoring this. And especially, I would like to thank Trine, who have been organizing the whole thing, the food, the great food, and uh, basically she put all the event together. She's great, wonderful. Really appreciate uh, what you're doing. Uh, this is the Sudan. It used to be one million square mile, the largest country in Africa, and uh, about one third of the United States. About 33 million human beings they live in that country. And a few years ago, there were split between the south and north. You will see it on the uh, on the map. And uh, basically, the country has been very troubled since independence. Uh, have been going to all kinds of civil wars and so forth. Um, so I don't want to go into details on that, but later on I will come questions about the reason of the split, the separation between South and North, because it's very important since we, you know, we all live in the United States, it's a very diverse country, and diversity has been playing a great role on bringing uh, the best of all different ethnic groups, while in in some countries, it's still diversity is the reason of bringing trouble and you know a lot of suffering to so many people. So that is very very important element in the war between the south and the north, and it end up unfortunately it end up with uh, separation. But uh, the war did not stop even after the separation between the south and north. Uh, there is uh, several groups in Sudan uh, that. It's not a homogeneous, it's not a homogeneous country. So there's a couple of ethnic group in Sudan that the war is continuing between the north, Sudan, which is the center of Sudan, and the government, and the different part of the country. And uh, as you, again, moving from one place to another place, you will see uh, foxholes all over the place. Uh, many, many of them, and it's very much in front of every single house, uh, you will see uh, for, you know, one of these. So as soon as you go to, you know, when you go guest to some people, will tell you, well, hi, how are you? They offer you, the, before, actually, you know, before they offer you anything, they will tell you, this is where you will be staying. If you hear the plan, you're going to run into this. Then they will show you the, uh, the foxhole um, and, and all over the place. And every, sometimes even, People jog on them, they say, oh, this is my own, this is yours, and, and so forth. But you will see them all over the place. And also you will see this, which is uh, a bomb effect. And the bombs, again, it's not like sophisticated bombs. What they do, they have these bottles, and they just fill them with stuff, metal and explosions and all of that, and they just, you know, throw them in people. And you will see this all over the place. This is a church it, in a beautiful site, it's a Catholic church. I, I did a work about this church in 2001, and I was very happy to go and visit this church now. And I met the educational supervisor, she's a, a, you know, a nun from Australia, and I met another uh, nun from Mexico. Uh, I was sitting, talking to her about education, what they do there, they do uh, she's doing uh, broadcasting. She's using the radio as a way of educating people about, you know, democracy, about uh, educating teachers, how they teach in different villages, all that. Again, you will see uh, these are the people that I, I work with. This is during one of the workshops. Uh, and the other thing, as soon as people learn about there is uh, you know, art exhibit or art workshop, everyone comes, everyone in, in the town comes. So I had like so many people come and go, they're very curious, they want to participate, they want to be all of this. Uh, another thing that I'd like to mention, a few years ago there were uh, starvation, people were starving, so forth. And now, when you go around, the, you drive around the village, you walk around, you will see people farming. They farm every single inch. 
around them. They farm in front of their houses, uh, they farm in, you know, in the landscape, they have like, you know, different, basically they farm. They, they grow sorghums and uh, different kind of nuts, uh, beans, all kind of stuff. So basically, if this world had been in a place which is desert, people would be dead by now, everyone. Uh, but also, uh, another thing, everyone work there. Everybody, either they farm uh, or they do some kind of work. You will not see uh, anybody not doing something. Of course, the villages, when you shake hands with women, uh, most of the villages are women in the, the places that they went to. Because men, usually they go to the front, they go to the war, defend them, you know, themselves, their family and so forth. But when you shake hands with women, all of their hands are really, really rough. And you can feel it. I, I noticed that and shake everybody. Uh, and basically, because they won't work, everybody works. And uh, they take a lot of pride on their work. And again, this is also uh, a way for them to resist and to call, and also to, you know, they carry themselves with a lot of courage and dignity. And that's very, very important. And you, when you talk to them, uh, to the people in this area, also they, you will feel that they want you to, to feel that they carry themselves with a lot of dignity. So everyone will work. This lady, she is uh, uh, physically uh, challenged. She cannot walk, but also she works. Kids work, you know, help uh, in any way. And I'm going to skip this one. But this is part. This is one of the exhibits that we have. And I mean, like stop bombing our homes, basically. Uh, at the same time, we decided to get the the plate to go to places that are being bombed. And we all decided to go together, and this is also came from the group that they were participating in the workshop. So uh, this is an actual bomb. Actually, this is a hospital. Uh, this is an actual bomb. Did not explode, uh, and it's still there. There's about four of them in the area of the hospital, and it's still there. So, uh, so we went there and we took our signs and we created that uh, stop bombing our hospital. And uh, this lady and her son, they came uh, walking two and a half hours to the hospital. Uh, as we are taught, taking pictures, when they get to the hospital, they discover that uh, there is no hospital because people just move because of the bombing. So she has to go somewhere else and it will be about five to six hours of walking with her son sick. So they decided to participate with us. Uh, this is the landscape, this area that, you know, it's a huge uh, hole made out of bomb. Also, we took some pictures here. This is some of the artwork. Um, one of the artists, uh, actually she, she created uh, one of the indigenous, old religion kind of structure. And we all took the picture around it. We went to the zoo, to the market. A lot of people selling things, buying things. We took pictures over there. We went to the background of the mountains themselves. We took pictures there, and as we taken, you know, we took these pictures, people were really, really happy. They were extremely happy. They see, they feel that they are doing something. They feel that they are resisting. They feel they are, they are like contributing to the community. They are participating, but they were really, really happy. They are extremely empowered by taking this picture. And actually, we went to this school. This school had been bombed several times as well. I'm sure I have another slide of it. Uh, but, ironically, it's called the Peace School. Uh, it's, it's a girls' school. Also, we took pictures of This is the school. This is the, the, the same school, like the, the first one with the front. And also, you see the school. Also, you see like the, the person who's guarding the school farming something, you know, growing some kind of food, as I mentioned. No inch and farm. Everything farm. People farm everywhere. Even this is like, you know, uh, this, this is the school that I did. We did our workshop on it. And this is the effect of the Antinov. Um, also, it's hidden here. Again, the, the sky is really beautiful as always. Uh, different time of the day. Different time of the day is like very dramatic as if it's seeing something, as if it's participating in the whole event. Wake up early, early in the morning. 
you see you know cloud flying through the sky and each workshop at the end of each workshop we usually held a public gathering where lots of people come and uh, this is one of the opening students who are talking about their work explaining what they did where they get their ideas from and how they did it this is how we moved our supplies from one place to another place um, students also working this is an urban planning kind of urban design workshop that i did with people in two places and we were thinking about you know refugees camps people just give you a few plastic and they ask you to go there and just build where are you supposed to build the hospital, where are you supposed to build the school, how are you supposed to design it, and why. So we talked a little bit about health, and the environment, about the design, and they really love it, they really like that. However, as soon as we said, okay, each group, go over there, this is your area, create some kind of a village with all the, the school, the, everything. Everyone want to create big guns and uh, to protect themselves. Uh, this is what they were telling me. Uh, you see, like, uh, this is, again, uh, at this camp specifically, we did not have any supplies. We just asked the guy with the courage to bring us some uh, clay. So we, we bought the clay and we, we designed that, and everyone created guns. And what I did after I returned back, I ran some of these images by a psychologist, uh, a friend of us who is, like, we working with, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, and look at children who are trying to analyze it and so forth. So basically, yeah, this is where their experience are. And this is what we, you know, the world will be promised with more soldiers, creating bigger guns and, and so forth. But anyway, this is their work. It's like, you see a lot of guns in the ass, all kinds of stuff. Guns, airplanes, tanks, And women are really girls. They work very hard. They carry lots of bricks to build their villages really hard. And this is a very interesting scene because, again, when we ask them, what do you guys want? They want to say, well, we want internet. So you see, like, internet and electricity. It's very, very important. People, you all take it for granted, but they don't have electricity. They don't have internet. They don't have light during the, you know, and then they want that. They want uh, soccer stadiums so they can play. Uh, and you will see the villages in here. And uh, WFA, World Food Program, uh, it's a very important part of their lives. These are their refugees camps because basically their life depends on uh, food come, you know, from far, far away. So. They created that. I did not ask them to create that, but it's part of their own creation. This is how you see like the buildings where the distribution. You'll see here the lines uh, with the some person, probably a Western person, sitting down and giving them the food and all of that. And this is the actual thing. This is what they experience. They stand in a line and that the building, the WMA, for long, 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 long hours just to get like few, you know, uh, some uh, probably uh, oil and uh, some flour, like, you know, a little bit, but they stay in the line. So it's, it's very much, this is what they created. This is part of the 3D art we work with them. I showed them Andy Woodworthy and other artists. They use sand to create artwork. They use flowers to create artwork and they created representational, learned representational work. This is an actual pulley, box. This, a piece that I did with some of them, this is a, a, a bombshell, and you look at it, you will find it made in China. So we get the large China flag, because China basically is selling weapons countries that does not respect human rights and basically they do not care about whom they sell weapon for or to or what these people use it for how why so uh, this is the piece lots of work like that lots of work like this writing this little girl 
created this piece with ashes and um, leaves. And I also asked her, what is this about? And she articulated as a relationship between life and death. Uh, this is a mother piece, someone, a uh, piece with fabric and uh, dry uh, leaves. Another piece. These are actual pieces of football that they're using it. This is the China piece, a star for you kids. They think they are stars, so they created stars. This is a piece at the end. And again, lots of people came in. I was shocked to see like 300 people coming to an art exhibit in the middle of nowhere, middle of war zone. This is the piece by itself. It's a lovely piece, and she was very happy to, to make that piece. Uh, this is at the opening in here. Again, the sky is really beautiful when you think about it. Different time of the day, this is at the evening. And uh, group picture, some of the artwork. Uh, stop bombing our culture. Another dance, and I think I'm done with that. So, thank you very much for coming, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. How long were the workshops in each place that you went? Most of them are four days. Yeah. And what kinds of, um, I mean, the work is amazing, and I think you. um, you had mentioned showing them work of other artists and so forth, um, but specifically about the drawings, what, how did you set up those projects with the, the students? How did you engage them in, in the drawing, and, and um, uh, what kind of guide did you did you give them? We did storytelling. Storytelling is very popular mm -hmm. in, in uh, traditional in that part of the world. Storytelling is very popular. So we did storytelling. We did like recent story, contemporary story, and then we moved a little bit about talking about individual experiences. So within the circle, each person, each one of the kids spoke about his or her individual uh, personal kind of experiences because uh, most of these workshops, well, all of, yeah, two of the workshops, they are in refugee camps. So people, that means like they move from one place to another place, from the, you know, the place that they walk to a safer place, uh, which is a refugee camp. Uh, and then we spoke about this journey, and I asked them to draw the journey, mm -hmm. but I did not, you know, Spot each kind of image that they got them in my company. And actually, some of them draw different things. Some of them draw like really nice things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, uh, but most of them, these are the toys that I get. Like, you know, and, uh, you know. and some of them draw dreams. Some of them are still dreams. Dream about things. Why the work has is, uh, happened there? And what's the roots? Because you know sometimes there are separation between the, the groups, and uh, it, that will be used in order to give meanings to something or other work. Uh, it's not. It's very interesting the presence of the Chinese in Africa. You know they are highly influential now in Africa. So it 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 has you know it's hard to me to understand really what's going on in Sudan. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, like it's, it's the issue. I, 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 I think people might explain it as power struggle, moving towards democratization, and all of that. You know, there's all this kind of element, religion element, cultural element, high culture. People think about indigenous cultures as low cultures. There's all kind of, of, of dynamics on, 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 on the reason of the world. Also, of course, you know, wealth and power. This is also a political scientist. Uh, when they talk about the reason of war, they talk about, you know, there's unequal distribution of wealth and power and all of that. 